Most countries around the globe are facing problems with invasive species. For some people, this may not seem like a very dangerous problem. But over the past 500 years, invasive species have been the number one cause of plant and animal extinctions. Damages caused by invasive species can also cost billions. And of course, they can cause a massive loss in biodiversity. Because of many complicated factors, some countries have more invasive species than others. And today I'll be going through five of the worst affected countries when it comes to invasive species. In this list, I will not be including overseas territories because in most cases this makes it a lot more complicated. For example, the island of Reunion is over 9,000 kilometers away from France, but technically it is a part of France. This small island alone boasts 173 invasive species, and this would mean that if the island of Reunion was a country, it would be the eighth worst affected country when it comes to invasive species. This is why I will not be including overseas territories. And the first country we will be visiting today is South Africa. Now, South Africa is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world, and contains most of the large mammals you often associate with Africa. One of these animals is, of course, the springbok, which is the national animal of South Africa. This antelope is one of the fastest land mammals on the planet and can reach speeds of up to 60 miles per hour. These antelopes of course have to look out for predators because South Africa is simply full of them. It's not just big cats that you have to look out for because of course South Africa is also home to the black mamba which is one of the fastest and most deadly snakes in the world. If you were looking to escape from these predators there's no safety in the water either because of course there's many large crocodiles which are more than happy to take down big mammals. Some more surprising members of the South African ecosystem can be found on the coast because this is where you can find the South African penguin. These penguins almost look out of place in Africa, but they are very popular with tourists. Because South Africa has such a competitive ecosystem, you'd think it would be hard for invasive species to thrive here. This is partly true, as there are only a few invasive mammal species, such as cats, pigs, and rats. Instead, the main problem that South Africa are facing is invasive plants. There are many different species of invasive plants in South Africa, many of these being water-loving plants. This is not only bad for the native wildlife that feed on native plants, but it is also bad for the overall ecosystem. These invasive plants drain water at a faster rate and have led to more intense droughts. This also has a knock-on effect to farming, so these invasive plants are not only bad for the wildlife, but are also bad for the economy. As I've covered before, South Africa also has a problem with invasive species in the water. Although South Africa is home to some very mean fish, South Africa's waterways have been invaded by American fish and European fish. These fish simply outcompete the native species and have proven to be very hard to get rid of. So at first glance, it may not seem that South Africa has many invasive species, but in most cases they're hiding away or simply very hard to identify. But all the invasive species in South Africa put it at number five on this list, as overall South Africa contains 208 invasive species. But the next country we will be focusing on is Cuba. Now Cuba is a very long and thin Caribbean country, stretching 1,200 kilometers from east to west. Because Cuba has an island ecosystem, there are many species here that can't be found anywhere else in the world such as the Cuban gar and the critically endangered Cuban crocodile. These endemic species have been struggling in recent years because island ecosystems are also very vulnerable. Because most islands have been separated from the rest of the world for millions of years, any new species entering island ecosystems can have a massive effect on the native species and can cause them to disappear altogether. Unlike South Africa that mostly has a problem with invasive plants and invasive aquatic species, Cuba's main problem is invasive mammals. Cuba's native mammals mostly consist of large rodents and large aquatic mammals. These native mammals are simply no competition to the invasive species, which mostly come in the form of dogs, cats, rats, and even mongoose. The native species simply aren't used to competing with these invasive animals, and this of course causes their numbers to decline. Unfortunately, many of these invasive species are also great bird hunters, and this is extremely bad news for the ecosystem, because Cuba is home to many unique and beautiful birds, and it is also home to the smallest bird in the world. Of course, there are many efforts to try and eradicate these invasive species and hopefully these efforts are successful because personally I think Cuba is one of the most interesting places when it comes to wildlife. But Cuba is number four on this list with 318 documented invasive species. But the next country we will be traveling to is Australia. Now Australia famously has a very interesting ecosystem and life for wild animals in Australia is often very harsh and unforgiving. 90% of Australians live on the coast because the deserts in central Australia are simply too harsh for most wildlife and are 
also too harsh for us. The most famous types of animals that can be found in Australia are of course the marsupials. The most famous examples of these creatures are obviously the kangaroos, but marsupials come in many different shapes and sizes. The predatory quolls are some of the most interesting marsupials in Australia, but unfortunately nowadays they are also some of the rarest. The inland taipan is one of the most venomous snakes in the world, and the venom contained in one bite from these snakes is thought to be able to kill over a hundred adults. These reptiles are one of the few creatures that can be found in central Australia, but the equally deadly funnel web spider is mostly found on the east coast. Even though Australia's landscape can be very unforgiving, it has proven to be very vulnerable to invasive species. Of course one of the most famous ecological disasters happened here when in 1935 cane toads were introduced into Australia. As I've covered many times before, these cane toads were introduced to feed on cane beetles, but it turned out they were very bad at this, and to make this introduction even worse, all the native predators that would try and feed on these toads would soon meet their end. Many predators in the cane toads native range had grown immune to their poison, but to the predators in Australia this poison was deadly. This resulted in predator numbers plummeting, but cane toads aren't the only problem species in Australia. When Europeans arrived in Australia they brought with them many invasive species, with some of the worst being camels and foxes. These red foxes have depleted the native wildlife, and the camels have proven to be perfectly adapted to the Australian outback. These species have led to Australia being third on this list, with 322 recorded invasive species. But for our next country, we'll be making a short trip over to New Zealand. Now as I've covered many times on the channel before, New Zealand is one of the most beautiful countries in the world, and it is also one of my personal favourites. It's home to the town with the longest name in the world, and is also home to the steepest road in the world. One of the reasons why New Zealand is still so beautiful is the fact that it still has a relatively small population. Famously, there are more sheep than people in New Zealand, and 30% of the country is a national reserve. New Zealand was the last country in the world to be inhabited by humans, but during the 800 years that humans have inhabited New Zealand, we really have caused a lot of damage. As I've covered many times before, New Zealand's ecosystem is mostly dominated by large birds, and has almost no native mammals. When humans arrived on these islands, they brought with them rats, cats, and stoats, and these totally obliterated the native birds. New Zealand's fresh waters were also negatively affected, because the native and very unique Galaxiids are now in direct competition with invasive fish such as trout, rudd and mosquito fish. By far one of the worst invasive species in New Zealand is the common brush-tail possum. They were introduced into New Zealand in the 1850s and they have had a massive negative impact on the native birds and also the local agriculture. Most invasive species tend to have a relatively small population outside their native range, but the common brush-tail possum's population in New Zealand is in the millions. Invasive species such as these possums have led to New Zealand being number two on this list, with 329 confirmed invasive species. But for our final country, Country, we will be making the very long trip over to the USA. Now of course the US is home to many iconic creatures, both in the skies, on the ground and in the water. But as the US is also one of the richest countries in the world, and also has very relaxed laws on pet ownership, many people keep animals from other countries both as pets or in private collections, and these animals eventually find their way into the wild. Famously, Florida is one of the worst affected areas when it comes to invasive species, with many large reptiles totally obliterating the native mammal populations there. Because Florida has a subtropical climate, many exotic creatures can survive here, and this is one of the many reasons why it's an invasive species hotspot. Whether you look in the water, on the ground, or in the air, you'll find non-native species, and this is one of the many reasons why they're number one on this list, with 523 recorded invasive species. Let me know if your country was on this list in the comments down below. But that's about it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.